Okay, dear students, today we are starting income tax computation individuals. Individuals. Now, before we move on, first of all, I want to show you one thing. I want to teach you one thing, which is fiscal year. Fiscal year. There is one term terminology in the tax paper, which is called fiscal year. What is fiscal year? Fiscal year is any time period for which and for which a country makes budgets, prepares budgets, right? And come country allocates the resources to different people. So fiscal year is any time period for which any country make budgets or fiscal year is any time period for which individual pays tax. So the better word is individual pays tax for fiscal year. Individual pays tax for fiscal year. That means if I am, an, I am an individual and I have to pay tax to government, so I will go after every fiscal year. After every fiscal year, I'll go in front of the government tax department and I'll pay my tax, taxes, okay? So individual pays tax for fiscal year. Individual pays tax for fiscal year. Now, as we are studying UK tax, as we are studying UK tax, so we so the UK fiscal year is relevant for us. So in UK, fiscal year starts on 6th April. Look at the screen. Fiscal year starts on 6th April and it ends on 5th April, 25th April. So from 6th April to 5th April, this is the fiscal year. And the fiscal year which I'm teaching you right now, it's 22-23 fiscal year. 22-23 fiscal year. It, is, it starts from 6th April 22 and ends on 5th April 23. So this is 22-23 fiscal year, which I'm teaching you right now. Yes, there is a possibility the rates which I'm teaching you right now may, may, may remain same in next fiscal year. There, there is a possibility. Sometimes the tax department announces that there is no changes in tax rates. So there is a possibility in future these rates will remain same. Okay, but right now I'm these I'm giving you the rates of 2022-23 fiscal year. So I repeat, what is fiscal year? Fiscal year is any time is a is a time period for which individual pays tax to government. Okay, so individual pays tax tax for fiscal year. And as we are studying UK tax, so in UK fiscal year starts on 6th April and ends on 5th April. And this fiscal year which we are studying is 22-23. Okay, now next thing three main things in tax paper number 1 incomes calculation number 2 tax calculation and number three, tax payment. These three things are a logical sequence, logical sequence. You know, in tax paper, you have to do these three things. In tax paper, you have to do three things. Number one, incomes calculation or think like that. For example, if I ask you to calculate my tax, if I ask you to calculate my tax, your first question will be, sir, what is your income? First, tell me your income. So before, without calculating income, we cannot calculate tax. First of all, we need to know what is your income. So yes, there are a lot of sources of income, employment income, trading income, interest income, dividend income. So always, if you want to calculate tax, first, you need to calculate income. So this is the first step. See, incomes calculation. Always we calculate incomes first. Always we calculate incomes first. Okay. The second step is tax calculation. Once we get the incomes, once we get the incomes, then we calculate tax by applying different tax rate, which I'll teach you. And the third step is tax payment. Then we go to pay tax. Okay. So there are three major things in tax. This is the order. Number one, incomes calculation. Number two, tax calculation and number three is tax payment. Incomes calculation, 
tax calculation and then tax payment never forget these three things these this is the basic thing okay so now in today's class we are going to do this second step we are my respected students we are going to do this second step that is tax calculation we are going to do this second step this is tax calculation so now when we are directly doing the second step so obviously in the question the first step the first step will be given ready made the first step will be given ready made in the question okay so you will be given ready made incomes in the question and you just need to calculate tax you just need to calculate tax okay now see i have there are two columns in front of you one column in the one column it is written non saving and in the second column it's written saving okay so tax department tax department has divided incomes in two categories tax department has divided has split incomes in two categories the first category is non saving and the second is saving just look at the screen in non saving which incomes falls in non saving trading income employment income property income and pension income what is pension income you invest in pension account in in your life and when you get old that account gives you return so that that return is pension income okay so tax department has has a split has divided income into two categories non saving and saving in non saving you have trading income employment income property income pension income but in savings income you have interest and dividend now one question sir why tax department has divided incomes in different categories in different categories because the tax rate of these incomes are different because the tax rates of these incomes are different like for non saving the tax rate is different for saving income the tax rate is different and why the tax rate is different for motivation for example just look at here just think government wants to government wants to increase investment in the stock market government wants people to invest more in stocks stock shares so government will automatically reduce the tax rate of dividend income government will reduce the tax rate of dividend income so people will be attracted towards stocks right so just to motivate people that's why the tax rates are different and that's why they have classified in different heads so we have non saving income and savings income now we are starting my dear student our topic with non saving we are now my dear students you can see first of all i'll start this show with non saving income although i have written the tax rates of dividend income but don't look at it don't look at the second column just ignore it first concentrate on the first column that is non saving income that is non saving income okay so you have these bands 0 to 5000 20% 5000 to 37 720% now as i have to teach something in future as well that's why i i split these bands into two categories otherwise these two are same for your easiness just think that you have only one band that is 0 to 37 700 0 to 37 700 is 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 one band okay and the tax rate is 20% then from 37 700 to 150000 it's 40% and 150000 and above is 45% now don't forget these are bands these are bands what do you mean by bands for example if a person is earning 200000 if a person is earning 200000 so out of this 200000 first 37 700 will be taxed for 20% the additional additional income will be taxed at 40% and then the additional income above additional income above 150000 will be taxed at 45% this is how it works this is how it works these are bands okay so never think like that for example just think if a person is earning 200000 if a person is earning 200000 so obviously this 200000 is more than 150000 so don't directly apply 45% on the overall income no that's wrong right these are bands now i have plot these look at here i have plot these bands like with 0 to 37 700 and then 37 700 to 150000 
37,700 to 150,000. Let me tell you the capacity of the second band. Let me tell you the capacity of second band. It's 150,000 minus 37,700. It becomes 112,300. Now, use your brain. The capacity of first band. The capacity of first band is 37,700, and the second band is 112,300. Okay. So these are the these are the bands these are the bands okay if you want to copy it you can copy it by pause by clicking pause on it or i'll provide you these slides as well these slides will be given to you as well it's your wish it's totally your wish okay now let's start with first question and right now i'm only teaching non saving income right now okay so in fiscal year 22 23 you have only one income which is property income you have only one income which is property income and it is let us say 60000 there is a person let us say mr x he has only one income property income now you tell me property income is non saving remember the classification property income is non saving income ns non saving so we'll write non saving it's non saving and for non saving we'll write n slash s okay now you don't have any other income so this will be your total income this will be your total income now this will be your total income there is no other income now listen to me for each and every individual in the uk for we are in in, in studying individual tax we are not studying corporation tax now right now individual tax for each and every individual in the uk for each and every individual in the uk government has given one relief government has given one relief which is called personal allowance at the end of the fiscal year when you calculate your tax there is one amount one fixed amount which is waived which is exempt for you which is a allowed expense for you and that is called personal allowance and for 22 23 fiscal year for 22 23 fiscal year it's 1512570 so what you will do you will write less personal allowance is 12570 see this is a each and every time it is allowed it is allowed you can deduct it from total income so it's a relief by government it's a relief by government okay so 60000 less 12570 60000 less 12570 let me do it it's 47430 now this is called taxable income this is called taxable income now listen to me students taxable income is the income on which now we'll directly apply tax rate taxable income is a income there are two definition of taxable income first taxable income is the income on which we will directly apply the tax rate number 2 taxable income income is the income which is which comes after deducting personal allowance taxable income is the income which comes after deducting personal allowance okay so now let's apply the tax rate what are the tax rate look at here see 0 to the first band is 0 to 37700 and you know the tax rate is 20% can you can see see the tax rate from 0 to 37700 the tax rate is 20% and then 40 and then 45 i'm strictly talking about non saving income okay so your income is 47430 now look at me you will pick this income you will pick this income and you will knock you will knock on the first band you will knock on the first band see the capacity of first band is only 37700 the capacity of first band is only 37700 and your income is much higher than this first band so you will consume you will consume complete this first band you will use complete this first band and that is 37700 now how you will do it look at here you will write non saving 37700 full band you are using and what is the tax rate what is the tax rate for first band it's 20% okay so 37700 times 20% 37700 times 20% is 7540 okay now still you haven't completed full tax now wait what was your taxable income 47430 out of this 47430 you have calculated tax on 
out of this 47430, you have calculated tax on 37700. Now, let's take calculate the excess income 47430 minus 37. It's 9730. Now, how much income is left? 9730 is left. Now, this band is already consumed. The first band is already consumed. So, obviously, the remaining income. Obviously, the remaining income of 9730. Obviously, the remaining income of 9730 will come in the second band. Will come in the second band. Now, wait. Sir, the question is, sir, can we put this 9730 in the second band? Yes, easily. Because the capacity of second band is 112300. The capacity of this second band, the higher rate band, is 112300. And you have the excess income of only 9730 so it will easily come this will easily come in the second man and you know the rate the tax rate of second man is 40 percent so now apply 9730 times 40 percent is 3892 3892 can anybody tell me the what's the answer double one four three two double one four Three, two, this is your income tax liability. Your first question done. Income tax liability. Now, just giving you one evidence, just giving you evidence that we have calculated. We have calculated tax on complete 47430. Complete 47430. Look at, add this number and this number. See, if you add these two numbers, 37700 and 97430. All of you students, please take out your calculator and check. If you add these two numbers, 37700 and 9730, you will get 47430. That means we have calculated tax on complete 47430. Okay. And hope you remember my last class. You remember in my orientation first class, I told you that I told you that normally UK government and majority governments in the world, they go for progressive tax system they go for progressive tax system and you know in progressive tax system as your income increases your tax rate increases as your income increases your tax rate increases your tax rate increases okay so my my respected students this first question is done you can have you can copy it or you can see it take your time take your time Okay, now I'm moving to the second question. If you want to copy it, just pause the screen and copy it. Very simple. That's the flexibility of recorded lectures, right? Now I'm moving to the second question, moving towards question number two. Now we have in 2022-23, we have one employment income of 10,000 and one property income of 15,000, right? Sorry, make it 25. So this makes, we have total income, both are non-saving. Use your brain. Both incomes are non-saving income. Employment and property, both are non-saving income. And right now, I am only teaching you, right now, I am only teaching you non-saving income. This is our beginning, right? So your total income is 35,000. Now use your brain. This is your total income. In UK, in UK, if you are an individual, so you will every for every fiscal year, you will get a personal allowance. You will get one exempt amount, which is called personal allowance. Personal allowance, right? 
So let's deduct this personal allowance. And from now onwards, I'll use the shortcut P dot A, personal allowance, right? And this number is one, two, five, seven, zero. Now tell me, you have a taxable income. Let's deduct it. 35 minus 12 is 23. Double two four three zero. Double two four three zero. Now this is very easy question. Taxable income is the income on which we directly apply tax rate. So you remember the first band. Your first band is zero to thirty seven seven hundred. Okay. This is the capacity of your first band. Now what's your good luck? Just think. This time your income is only twenty two thousand four thirty. So this income will easily come in this first band. This complete income, this time, this complete income will come in the first band, okay? You don't need to use the second band. So how you do it? You'll write NS. What's your income? Double two, four, three, zero. And as this income lies in the first band, as this income lies in the first band, so you have to apply only 20% on it. So you will get it. This is your income tax liability. The shortcut of income tax liability is ITL. The shortcut of income tax liability is ITL. ITL is the shortcut of income tax liability. Take your time, quick. Now, we have started this show with the non-saving income. Now, I'll slightly, add, I'll slightly add different types of income in it. I will slightly add different types of income. Now, the next income I'm introducing is dividend income. The next income I'm introducing is dividend income, okay? Okay, dear students, let's start. Your new income is dividend income. First of all, there is a basis of assessment of dividend income. 
it is written clearly clearly on your screen dividend income is taxed on receipt basis dividend income is taxed on receipt basis means receiving date must fall in your fiscal year listen if you know our fiscal year you know the boundary of our fiscal year our fiscal year starts on 6th april and ends on 5th april and that fiscal year which i am teaching you right now it's 22 23 that means it starts on 6th april 22 and ends on 5th april 23 right so if you want to if you want to include a certain amount of dividend that dividend must be must have a receiving date receiving cash receiving date in your fiscal year if the receiving date lies in your fiscal year if the receiving date of that dividend lies in your fiscal year then you can include otherwise you can't otherwise just leave it just leave it in the question only those dividends we include those have a receiving date in our fiscal year so read it again dividend income is taxed on receipt basis means receiving date must fall in your fiscal year now the second good news this is the good news for dividend income nrb nrb the full form of nrb is nil rate band you can write somewhere nrb <coughs> the full form of nrb is nil rate band of 2000 is available irrespective of your income what does it mean see i have changed the color means for dividend always first 2000 into zero percent what does it mean it means if you are earning a dividend income so always whenever you start calculating tax for dividend whenever you start calculating tax for dividend income the first 2000 of dividend income will be multiplied with zero zero tax rate zero percent it's exempt it's exempt it's a good news it's a relief for you relief for you right so for dividend income for nrb of 2000 is available So whenever you need to calculate dividend income, always first 2000 of dividend income is multiplied by 0%. Now the next thing, what are the tax rate? Look at the tax rate. Students look at the tax rate. It's in front of you. If you want to take the picture of these tax rate, you may. It is also written in your, in my book. It is also written in the exam kit. Everywhere it is written. You can take the pic. If you want to copy it, just pause it and copy. So from 0 to 37,700, the rate is 8.75%. 37,700 and to 150,000, the rate is 33.75 and 150,000 above, above the rate is 39.35%. So my dear student, from now onwards, I'll change the question. The person will not only earn the non-saving income, but also I will add dividend income in the question. Non-saving plus dividend, two types of income. Now we'll discuss two types of income. Okay, now let's start. Let's start. This is the question for 22, 23, right? Trading income is equal to 50,000. Dividend received, see the word dividend received. Dividend received. It's how much? It's uh, 20,000 pounds. And now see the date. The date is 1-1-2023. 1 1 2023 now open your eyes hope you remember yes this date this receiving date falls in your fiscal year you, you remember your fiscal year i just taught you i just taught you in today's class your fiscal year starts on 6th april 22 and ends on 5th april 23 so yes this this date lies in your fiscal year so yes we have to include this dividend now requirement is income Tax liability is the requirement. Income tax liability is the requirement. Okay. Let's start. Let's start this question. Now we have two incomes. See, we have one trading income, which is non-saving. And we have one dividend received. One income is dividend received. Okay. Now let's start. Now we'll do it in columns form. The first column is non-saving. The second column is dividend. Very simple. Just look at it. First of all, I'll write trading income here. Obviously, trading income is non-saving. 
So trading income was 50,000. I've just written it. Then I've written dividends. Dividend is 20,000. Now let's add. So you will have a total income of 50,000 non-saving and 20,000 dividends. Now, 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 each and every, you know this, each and every individual is entitled. Each and every individual is entitled for each and every individual is entitled for a personal allowance of 12570. Each and every individual is entitled for a personal allowance of 12570. 12570. Now, as a student, you may ask, sir, now there are two, two types of income you have. And there is only one personal allowance, only one personal allowance every year. So from where you will deduct personal allowance, from where you will deduct. Now listen, the priority is open your eyes and open your ears. The priority is always, always use personal allowance in front of non-saving income first. Always use personal allowance in front of non-saving income first and then dividend income. Now, what is the logic? The logic is non-saving income has higher tax rate non saving income has higher tax rate so who whatever income the income with the higher tax rate must be reduced so we'll get more benefit i repeat see you have seen the tax rate non saving income has got the highest tax rate so if you reduce the income with highest tax rate you will get more benefit more tax benefit okay so now we'll deduct personal allowance from non saving Okay, this is the first priority. This is the first priority. Okay, yes, I see. If you have less, for example, you have a non-saving income of 10,000. For example, you have a non-saving income of 10,000. So yes, now you will use first 10,000 of the personal allowance in front of non-saving and then the remaining personal allowance in front of dividend income. Okay, so your answer is Three seven, and this is twenty thousand. Okay, so you have a taxable income, and taxable income is the income. Taxable income is the income. Look at here, on which we directly apply the tax rate. On which we directly apply the tax rate. Now the next question, sir, how to calculate the tax now? We have two incomes. We have two incomes. So listen the priority. The priority, the priority in which you are using personal allowance, the same priority you will apply here. The first priority is this, and this is second, okay? So first of all, you will calculate tax on non-saving. First of all, you will calculate tax on non-saving, and then you will calculate tax on, first of all, you will calculate tax on non-saving, and then you will, So first of all, you will calculate tax on non-saving and then dividend, okay? Now, let me make the bands again for you. These were the bands. This is 37,700. So the capacity of first band is 37,700. And this is 150K. So it will be 112300. Remember the capacities. Remember I told you the capacities. Now, first of all, you will pick non-saving income. We start calculating tax from non-saving. How much is the non-saving income? It's 37430. 37430. 
so you will pick this income you will pick this income and you you will you will knock you will knock the first band you will be knocking the first band so yes this income this non saving income is lower the capacity of first band is higher this non saving income is lower, lower and the capacity of first band is higher so automatically this will come in the first band so what you will write you will write here non saving and this is 3 7 Four three zero multiply by the first band. The tax rate of first band. The first the tax rate of first band is twenty percent. So tell me. So. Okay. So three seven four three zero. Three seven four three zero multiply by twenty percent. Let me check check it. It becomes seven four eight six. Seven four eight six. Now. use your common sense the official the official capacity the official capacity of first band is 37700 and how much you used it you used 37430 here so 37700 less 37430 you have still 270 you have still 270 is in this band you have still 270 left in this band open your eyes and open your ears now this remaining capacity will be used for dividend income i repeat already non saving income non saving income has consumed 37430 of the first band so now the remaining 270 now the remaining 270 of the first band will be used by dividend income okay so now we are going towards dividend income because we have because we have calculated we have calculated tax on we have calculated tax on non saving okay now dividend income is 20000 dividend income is 20000 my my dear student dividend income is 20000 now listen to me golden words i am saying very important whenever for dividend income this is constant whenever you need to calculate tax on dividend income when ever you need to calculate tax on dividend income always always first use nrb nrb is nil rate band so the dividend nrb is 2000 so always first do 2000 into 0% first 2000 no tax first 2000 no tax i repeat whenever you need to calculate tax on dividend income always 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 first 2000 multiply by 0% so it's zero okay so now look at here out of this 20000 you have calculated tax on 2000 out of this 20000 dividend income you have calculated tax of 2000 so now 18000 dividend income is left 18000 dividend income is left use your brain use your brain now one more golden dialogue one more super red dialogue although the percentage tax of nrb is 0% although the percentage tax of nrb is 0% but nrb always consumes your band nrb always consumes your band nrb always uses your band so now listen this is 2000 nrb and see this capacity is this capacity is 270 so nrb has used this 270 and also also listen here what is 2000 minus 230 270 sorry 2000 minus 270 is 1730 remaining 1730 is used by this this band i repeat although the tax rate of nrb is 0% but yes nrb eats your band nrb consumes your band right so we were on the first band we were on the first band and the capacity left was 270 so yes this is 2000 nrb is 2000 so nrb has already used this 270 and remaining 1730 is used from the next band now 112300 112300 minus 1730 One one zero. Still, you have a, still you have a limit of one one zero, five seventy. Now open your eyes. How much dividend income is left? Student, tell me. How much? How much dividend income 
is left to calculate tax 18,000. 18,000, okay? So now you will pick up this dividend income. Look at here. You will pick up dividend income and you will knock this first band. You will knock this first band. You will knock this first band. This first band is over. This first band is already consumed by non-saving. So obviously you will come to the second band. Obviously you will come to the second band. And yes, you have a very big capacity left. You have a very big capacity left of 110570. You have a very big capacity left of 110570. So it will automatically come. It will automatically come in the second band. It will automatically come in the second band. So you will write 18,000. And what is the tax rate? What is the tax rate of dividend income second band? You have taken the picture. Tell me what is the tax rate of dividend income second band? Let's let me scroll the screen. The tax rate is see this 33.75. This is the tax rate 33.75%. Let me write it here. Six zero seven five. Okay, so now that's the end of this question. Now add all these. Listen, add. This is the tax computation area. Okay. Now, for non-saving, you have how much? Non-saving is 7486 7, and then 6075. We need total tax. So it's 131561 one, is your income tax liability. ITL. Your question done. ITL. ITL. See, everything is done in front of you. ITL is 135671. So now... You learn few lessons. You learn few lessons in this. Number one, whenever you need to, whenever you, first of all, dividend income is taxed on receipt basis. Always, always check the receiving date. Always, always, always check the receiving date of dividend income. Always check the receiving date of dividend income. Number one, receiving date must fall in your fiscal year. Number two, whenever you need to you utilize personal allowance, whenever you need to utilize your personal allowance, Always go for non-saving income first and then dividend income, right? Thirdly, whenever you need to calculate the tax, always calculate tax on non-saving income first and then dividend income. Now, one more very super hit dialogue. These bands, see, see, read this, read this line on the screen. On your screen, you can see it is written. These bands, see this, these bands are disposable bands. See in your screen, you can see. These bands are disposable bands. What do you mean by disposable bands? If one band, if your if your first band, for example, if your first band is totally consumed by non-saving income, then you cannot use the same band for dividend income. I repeat, these bands are disposable bands. That means once eaten, once consumed, you cannot use it for other income. That means if you have used non save if you have used your first band for non saving income completely now you cannot use it for dividend income okay otherwise just think otherwise there will be no progressive tax system otherwise there will be no progressive tax system progressive tax system in progressive tax system with new income with additional income you have to apply higher tax rates with additional income you have to apply higher tax rates if you want to copy it, copy it by clicking pause on your screen and you can copy it.
Now let's move to the second question. Okay, it's my first request. Don't see the solution directly. First, click pause on the screen and solve it yourself. Okay, you need you must you must need growth. If you do things yourself, then 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 you will learn things. So first, click pause on the screen and then solve it. Then solve it yourself and then match with the with the solution. Okay, but I'm starting it right now. So. You have seen the receiving date falls in your fiscal year. Receiving date of dividend income falls in your fiscal year. So now you have again, you will make two columns. The first column is non-saving. Second is dividend. Okay. Now listen, you have a trading income of 20,000. You have dividend of 45 let's add it your total income will be your total income will be 20k and 45000 now each and every individual gets personal allowance of 12570 every fiscal year and what is the priority always go for non saving income first so personal allowance Twenty thousand minus one two five seven zero. This makes a seven four three zero. This is your taxable income. Okay. Now and this is forty five thousand. Now let me make the bands for you. The bands are. This is zero thirty seven seven hundred, and this is one fifty K. Okay, the capacity of this band is thirty seven thousand seven hundred. This is one one two three hundred. Very simple, it's go, cool. it's very simple. Okay, now let's do the taxation calculation. First of all. We always start tax calculation with non-saving. So non-saving income is 7430. You will pick this non-saving income and you'll knock the first band. You will pick the non-saving income and you'll knock the first band. So the capacity of first band is 37,700. So yes, it's a very big capacity and very low income. You have income is only 7430. So it will easily come. It will easily come in this band. And now what is the tax rate? You will write non-saving income here. 7430 and what is the tax rate of first band? Now <clears throat> 7430 times 20%, how much? It's 1486. Now please check the remaining capacity. 37700 minus 7430. It's three zero two seven zero. Now this is the remaining capacity of first band left. Now this remaining capacity we'll use for dividend income. Now this remaining capacity we'll use for dividend income. Let's start dividend income. Start. Simply write dividend. My dear student, this is my old dialogue. Now it's very common. 
whenever you need to calculate dividend income, always, 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 first 2000 times 20%, times 0%. First 2000 is the nil rate band, NRB. So you will write NRB 2000 multiply by 0%, it's zero. And now out of this 45,000, you have just calculated tax on 2000. So how much is left? 43,000 dividend income is still left. 43,000 dividend income is still left. Now, one more famous dialogue I told you. Yes, NRB has a rate of 0%. NRB has a rate of 0%, but yes, NRB consumes your band. NRB consumes your band. So in which band right now we are? In which band right now we are? We are in the first band. And how much capacity was left? 30270. So out of this 30270, 2000 is also used. So now 28270 capacity is left. Now 28270 capacity is left. And now let's calculate the normal tax on dividend income. Let's calculate the normal tax on dividend income. Student, open your eyes. How much dividend income is still left? How much dividend income is still left? It's 43,000. Look at here. It's 43,000. So now I will pick, I will pick this dividend income and I'll knock on the first band. I'll pick this dividend income and I'll knock on the first band. How much capacity is left? See how much capacity is left? 28270. 28270 capacity is left, but your income is 43,000. Your dividend income is 43,000. So that means we will eat up we will use, we will consume complete remaining capacity. Complete remaining capacity of first band that is 28270. Let's use it. So we'll write 28270 multiply by what's the rate? It's I think 8.75%. The first band rate, let me check. The first band rate, rate is 8.75, yes. So we'll write 8.75, 28270. 28270 times 2473.6. 2473.6. Okay, now still it's not done. Now you tell me out of this 43,000, we have calculated tax on 28270. 28270. Out of this 43,000, we have calculated tax on 28270. Now, how much is left? 43,000 minus 28270. This is 14730. Now, your final dividend income of 14730 is left. Your final dividend income of 14730 is left. And you have consumed complete first band. You have consumed complete first band. So automatically you, you don't have any other way. And now you have to go in the second band. The second band, see the capacity of second band is 112300. The capacity of second band is 112300, 112300. So what you will do, this income is 14730. This income is 14730. It can easily come in the second band. It will easily come because you have a capacity of 1 lakh 12,000, 112,300. And this income is only 14730. So this income will easily come here. And the tax rate for dividend second band is 33.75%. It's 33.75%. Yes, I'm right. So 14730.3375. Now let's add all of them. You will get ITL. You will get ITL. This is the answer. There is a possibility sometime I can do calculation error because this class is not a live class. No students with me, only I'm using the calculator. So it's a possibility that sometime I may do calculation error. You can do it. You can correct it. Okay. Sometime 
in terms of additions and subtraction or multiplication, human error may be done. Okay, but I'm writing each and everything, so you you can use your brain and common sense. This question is also done. Hope you did it correct. Hope you did it correct. Please have a look. Now the next question with more learning, with more learning. See, now your trading income is less than personal loss. Trading income is less than personal loss. Remember? So first of all, you will use the personal loss in front of this and then you'll go, then you will go to the dividend income. Okay. Try your luck. I'm going to solve it for you. Try your luck. Start. Okay, let's do it. You will have non-saving and then dividend. Okay. Non-saving is trading, which is 11. Dividend <clears throat> is how much? 42,000. You will have a total income of 11,000 and 42,000, right? Now, now let's deduct personal allowance. We all know that personal allowance, personal allowance is 12570. Personal allowance is 12570, but now tell me what is the priority? What is the priority of using the personal allowance? Always use for non-saving first, non-saving first. So 11,000 you will use here. But you tell me how much is the personal allowance? It's 12570. So out of that 12570, you have used 11,000 here and remaining 1570. 12570. 12570. Yes. 1570, you will deduct here. So 40430. Now this time the results are different. See? You have no non-saving income now. In the taxable income section, you have no non-saving income now, okay? So now you will start calculating tax directly, directly on dividends. It's very easy. Now, what's your bands are? It's zero to 37, 700, and then 150K, 1, 1, 300. This is 37, 700. Now, go very slow. First of all, if you want to calculate tax on dividend, always there is a first rule. Very easy. To, there is no non-saving income in this question. If you want to calculate tax on dividend, there is always a first rule. There is always a first rule. NRB, dividend NRB. And dividend NRB is given in irrespective of your income. You will always get it. So first of all, you'll write NRB. That is 2000 times 0%, which is 0. Okay. So out of 40430, we have calculated tax on 2000. So it's 38430. And yes, I always say this, NRB always consumes your band. NRB always consumes your band. And now we are on the first band. This time we haven't used any band. This time we have not used any band. So yes, let's start using it. Now 35700 is left. 35700 is left now. As you have you as you have done as you are done with NRB, now you have to calculate normal tax on dividends. Now you have to calculate normal tax on dividends. Okay. So how to calculate normal tax? How much is the income? It's 38. The income is 38430. The income is 38430. You will pick this income and you'll knock on the first band. 
you will pick this income and you'll knock on the first band and then first band capacity is now only 35700 the first band capacity is now only 35700 so your income is 38430 but your capacity is only 35700 so you will use you will use complete capacity of first band and you know you know the tax rate for dividends in the first band is 8.75% so Three one two three point seven five. Okay, so this band is completely used now. This band is completely used now. Out of this three eight four three zero, how much? How much tax also computed? Thirty five seven hundred income is already. We have compute tax on this. So out of this three eight four three zero minus thirty five seven hundred. Now how much additional income is left? Only twenty seven three zero income is left. Only 2730 income, 2730 income is left. 2730, 2730 income is left. 2730 is the income left. So obviously as the first band is totally consumed, now you will go for the second band. Now you will be going for the second band and you can see, open your eyes, in the second band you have a capacity of 112300. In the second band you have a capacity of 112. 300 so this 2730 will easily come this 2730 will easily come in the second band and which is 33.75 the rate is 33.75 percent nine twenty one it's nine twenty one now please add these two Plus, plus 921. So this will be 4044. 4044.75, which is IT income tax liability. Income tax liability. Hope you did it correct. This is the answer. No, next income is interest income.
Okay. Students, please look at here. First of all, the first line is same. Interest income for individuals. We are studying individuals strictly. Interest income is taxed on interest income is taxed on receipt basis. Interest income is taxed on receipt basis. Again, that means receiving date is very, very important. Receiving date is important. Or you should say just like dividend income, receiving date must fall in your fiscal year. So don't forget it. Okay. Now, the second thing is, hope you remember there is one thing which I taught you, NRB, nil rate band, nil rate band. Look at here. In dividend income, in dividend income, NRB of 2000 is available to everybody irrespective of your tax status, irrespective of your income, irrespective of your tax status. Okay. But now see these three lines, these three important lines. In, in, in interest income, NRB is dependent on taxpayer's status. NRB of interest income is dependent on taxpayer's status. See first line. If individual is basic rate taxpayer, I'll tell you what is the meaning of basic rate taxpayer. Then interest NRB is 1000. If individual is higher rate taxpayer, I'll tell you what higher rate taxpayer is. Higher rate taxpayer, the, the guy who is who is paying tax on 40%, then interest NRB is 500 pounds. If individual is additional rate taxpayer, additional rate is 45%, then no interest NRB is available. That means you are very rich. You are very rich. You don't need anything. You don't need any such things, right? So what is the comparison of interest income and dividend income? Both incomes, interest income and dividend income, both are taxed on receipt basis, first thing. Number two, in dividend income, NRB of 2000 is available irrespective of your tax status, irrespective of your income status. But in, in interest income, NRB is available according to taxpayers' status, three lines. If the individual is basic rate, basic rate is 20%. If individual is basic rate taxpayer, then NRB of 1000 is available in interest. If individual is higher rate taxpayer, then NRB of 500 is available. If individual is additional rate taxpayer, then NRB of no NRB is available, right? Now, what are the tax rate? Let, let me show you and let me write the tax rate in proper form now. Now let me write the rates of interest income. This is zero to 5,000 at 0%. See, this is different. Then 20, then 40, and then 45. Okay.
Okay. So these are the tax rate of interest income. Now for today's class, we are doing till here. And in the next meeting, we'll continue further. Okay. Do revise these things. Thank you. Take care.